now. I am excited. I was really excited to talk to you. We have a couple of friends with us. Before I get to them, because you know I'll hog all their time, please go to the hashtag MSBuild to ask questions. I am looking at your tweets right now on my amazing phone here. Also go to aka.ms front slash Microsoft Build Live to submit your questions. We are talking all about the new edge. Is that right? So that why don't you introduce yourself, my friend? We'll start with you. Cora. Yes. Hey, I'm Gaurav Sait. I lead, I'm one of the group program managers on the Microsoft Edge team. I lead our product thinking around developer experiences and moving the web ecosystem forward. Fantastic. Yeah, my name is Jatinder Man. I'm the group program manager for the Microsoft Edge web platform team. So let me start with the, there has been a huge change with the direction that Edge is taking. Why don't you explain that first? And then the second question I have is, why did we do that? We'll start with you. Sure. Oh, yeah. that's you, Jatinder. Yeah. yeah, as you may have heard in the keynote and in the Edge State of the Union, uh, we're really changing the paradigm with the next major version of Edge. So we've heard from customers, developers really, about how they see inconsistent capabilities on the web platform. And it's made, them very, it's made it very difficult for them to implement new features con consistently because there's different web standards, which has caused compatibility issues. So yes. the, the next major version of Edge will support, will adopt the Chromium open source project. Okay. So we're going to give customers a more consistent set of capabilities across more browsers. But so CSS will just work everywhere? Yes, right. yes. And you were going to say, but? Yeah, and we not only want to adopt Chromium, we also want to become a significant contributor to that project in a way that we can make Chromium and other Chromium-based browsers better. So it's not just about making Edge better. We want to make the web better. Oh, that's right. awesome. Yeah, and I think just to add to what Jitender was saying, I think one of the big things that we're doing as a part of this change is we are also, uh, you know, starting with a completely different focus. We are actually, you know, we have this relentless drive to go listen to our customers sure. to see what do they really need and start delivering on some of those things. So for example, the new version of Microsoft Edge, which is going to be built on top of Chromium, will be available across all versions of Windows. We'll also go cross-platform to Mac, to Linux. You know, it'll be available across iOS and Android. So with, with the previous in-market browser, we were kind of tied down. And with the new edge, like one of the big things that we are changing is the way we kind of think about delivering value to our customers, understanding what do they really need and delivering on those. Awesome. Well, we already have some questions coming in. If you go to hashtag MSBuild, I'll, I'll uh, keep scrolling to make sure I get the good questions. And you can go to ak.ms, Microsoft Build Live. The first question, which is actually a really good question, and I'm glad you're asking this, what's Chromium? Good yeah. Uh, so Chromium is an open source project which allows other Chromium-based developers like Google, now Microsoft Edge, but there's other browsers out there too, like Brave, Samsung Browser, that are building a browser off of Chromium. So Chromium is both the web platform and UI components of a full browser. Now there are com components that aren't a part of that, like DRM, Flash, that require licensing. There's no branding, so it's not Chrome. It is the engine that runs a browser. And I think that this, speaks to the next question, how is Chromium different from Chrome? Right, so I think the way to think about it is Chromium is the core open source project. You know, then I think there are multiple browsers and other projects like Electron, Chromium Embedded Framework that are built upon this foundation. Chrome is one of the other major products which is built upon Chromium. Essentially what, you know, the Google Chrome team does is it adds a bunch of extra functionality around the common open source project and kind of ship, bundles it and ships it at what it calls Chrome. But Chromium is the open source project upon which Chrome is built. And that's a truly open source project. That's correct. And we're not like, are we like duplicating it or doing, what, or is this just like a one thing that we're contributing to? No, we're contributing to Chromium. So we're early in this, this uh, journey, but we've been very well, warmly welcomed by both Chromium engineers, Chromium browsers, so we've made some modest but meaningful contributions. We've been in the project for four months and have landed almost 400 commits into Chromium. So it, it is uh, an open source project that we're participating in. Now, Mary Jo Foley was on two days ago and she says she wants to call this Credge. Yikes. Is that something we want to persist? <laughs> it, it just doesn't roll off the tongue <laughs> like Edge does. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Maybe even Edgium is Ed better. Edgium, yeah, I yeah. don't know, Mary Jo. <laughs> if you, you should, really need, but should, no, should I think gone. we love the product name, Microsoft Edge, that's cool. And, and I like it a lot. Now, here's the thing. We are obviously at a developer conference. 
what are we doing for developers in Edge? That's a great question. I think we can both uh, cover this. Maybe I will start with a little bit with developer tools, talking about web as an app platform, et cetera. And then I'll hand it off to Jatinder. He can uh, you know, tell you a little bit more about how we are thinking about the platform. Okay. So for the developers, I think there are three big things that I want to share. Number one is with the new Edge browser, we are bringing an ability to really be able to create cross-platform applications that are built only using web technology. So think about progressive web apps that are optimized for your uh, desktop experiences, will be available cross-platform, will be available across all versions of Windows, all built using you know, the new PWS stuff. I have an, you know, the Mac in front of me, I can show you a quick demo if we need to. So the first thing is cross-platform applications built primarily using web technologies. Uh, number two is we actually previewed a new WebView control for developers. This new WebView control will be available across all versions of Windows. It will be available both for your UN32 and UWP apps, uh, you know, and it'll be consistent. What we previewed was the, uh, you know, the first preview for the Win32 uh, WebView control. This WebView control, again, like the big problem it solves, it will be always up to date, regardless of which version of Windows you're running. And the number three thing is really a new, consistent, cross-platform set of developer tools that will now work across your web context, be it the browser, be it your progressive web apps, or be it your PWA, or be it your web views. So PWAs, a new web view control, and a new powerful set of uh, you know, developer tools. Yeah, and as Gaurav mentioned earlier, we're trying to develop a new habit across all of product planning, and that's really listening to our customers and understanding their unmet needs. And as we talked to web developers, we first heard like there's too much inconsistent capabilities across browsers. Even though a lot of progress has been made, there's still inconsistency. So by adopting Chromium, we're going to give them more consistency across more browsers so they can just rely on a consistent set of platform APIs. Yeah, my favorite mug of all time is the, you know what I'm the CSS is awesome. You know what I'm talking about. Everyone, yes. We're all sitting here laughing, crying. CSS is awesome, you know, with the square, and then the awesome is like not, yes. the, there's like, I remember back in the jungle days, you know, of the, of the internet where we would have to do for this and that and this and that, and there'd be different. But now this is hopefully gonna make that a little bit better, is that right? Yes, I think our hope really, you know, in terms of one of the big uh, constituents of making this move was really to kind of go help address developer pain. Like, you know, we were like, by building on different platforms, we were actually introducing more pain for them, more cost for them to test across different things. We really hope this is gonna be more helpful in reducing those costs. Yeah, and, and we also heard like, as a Mac developer, it's really hard to test or develop on edge. We, we just weren't there. So fragmentation was a problem. So we're solving that edge is available wherever our customers are at. Well, this is cool because like, look, I'm looking at Twitter, by the way, use the hashtag msbuild or go to aka.msmarkets.buildlive. Amanda and I, Amanda Hatch says, just heard that edge is now going to use the Chromium open source project while watching the live stream. Well done. Web devs all around will thank you in the future. Man and I are saying thank you for that. <laughs> That's thank great. You. Thank you. Next question uh, coming in from uh, online is, will Microsoft's Chrome, Chromium Edge replace class, classic Edge builds in existing Windows 10 builds? Yeah, this is a great question. I think the way I will say is at some point in time, it will, of course, supersede it. But, you know, a browser is just one of the things that uses the web platform, right? So let me address that problem from a developer perspective. So today on Windows, there are over 2 million applications that use some sort of web content. Right. Like, this, the, the fact that it'll supersede will not mean that your apps will just stop working. One of the goals as we are starting to work on this new engine is to make sure that your apps continue to work as is. So while there might be like from a browser perspective, we might take the next step, you know, as we make progress, your apps will continue working. So whether you're okay. creating Windows web applications, hosted web apps, you know, existing PWAs that come from the Microsoft Store, et cetera, they should all work, keep working. Awesome. So we were talking about devs, and then you said you would show us something. I want to see, can you give us a sneak peek of what devs can look forward to sure. in, in Edge? And I, I believe the, you have a Mac here. That is correct. I have a Mac here. Okay, a and long this, time. Is, this is the Edge browser on a Mac. Is that Th right? That is correct. All right, let's go to a screen and see what he's got. Okay. So what I have here is the dev channel for the Edge browser running on a Mac. Uh, you know, it's, we are previewing it at build. It's not yet shipped publicly, and we are working hard to get it out. So All right, can we go to his screen, though? I want to make sure everyone can see that we're on a Mac do doing, uh, there we go, there we go. Yeah. 
So, you know, we have the edge dev bits here. So now what I have here and what I want to show you is, you know, you typically on a, on a browser, what, what do you end up doing? You end up going to websites. So in this case, I'm going to the Starbucks, uh, you know, application. Typically go there to order my cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Now, Starbucks, the way the developers authored this app, they enhanced it to, uh, you know, become what they call progressive web app. You know, any website just needs three key things to become a progressive web app. They need, you know, to make sure they have service workers in storage for offline access. It's served over HTTPS, and then they have an app manifest to uh, you know, describe the look and feel of the website if it is installed as an app. So out here, you will see I'm logged in into my site. I have a couple of extensions in my browser. You know, whenever you will, as a user, navigate to such a website, the browser will show you a thing about installing an app. I can go ahead, install the app, and what you will see is the you know, app or the website popped out. Now this to a user is giving me an absolute native look and feel of like, hey, it's actually an app. Now if I go here in my dock, you can see it is showing up as an icon. Holy cow. If I go up in my you know, spotlight search and start looking for Starbucks, it just appears like an app that was installed on my machine. And for developers you know, who are creating these apps, Starbucks in this case, it helped them increase their business metrics, business KPIs, and they said their monthly active users almost doubled by offering a progressive web app experience to the users. The one last thing I want to cover Please, here yeah. is if you go back to this app from a developer perspective, the first thing is you will see that the state, like the extensions carried over from the browser. The other thing is if I just go and I want to use the developer tools and you know, go and inspect the page, it's the exact same set of tools that are now available to your apps as they are available to a you know web browser. So, so I'm looking at this and I, like it, it like washed over me. So I gotta I gotta slow it down a sure. little bit. So basically, you went to a website. Yep. But did you have to do any additional coding to make it pop out as a PWA? Yeah. So the developer had to. They had to enhance their website and ensure that they're using service workers. Okay. They are adding an app manifest. And the third thing they need to do is make sure their web content is served over HTTPS. So, you know, I can take you back there to show those yeah. three things. And like, how is this different from, like, and I'm forgetting the thing when, you know, like, like, oh, Electron. How is this different from Electron? So, the big thing, the, this is all built on pure web technologies. Okay. Like, Electron packages, you know, a copy of uh, Chromium and a copy of Node and brings it together onto your machine. So that's another way of doing desktop apps. Uh -huh. This is your desktop apps done purely using the web running inside of the web content. With this, you're just using the installed platform version on your machine. So, you know, one of the big differences is with Electron, you get another copy of Chromium that is installed on your machine but this is just using whatever is available on the system. And when I install it, is there like an icon there that I can yes. go to back forever? Absolutely. You can go pin this icon, you know, et cetera. And the thing that I was showing you is, uh, you know, if I kind of go here and show you the app manifest, you know, with the tools, if you go to the app tab, application tab, let me go Holy in. Holy cow. Like, they, these people don't surprise me very often, but I had not seen this before. So this is essentially, you know, a web developer is saying, hey, when you go to the desktop, this is the icon, or, you know, to the dock, this is the icon you need to use. When you're showing me the branding of the app, it needs to take a green branding on the top, etc. That's really, like, I'm literally speechless. And you, everybody knows that I'm not speechless very often. <laughs> this is really Sorry. cool, because then you can... You can enhance your experiences, because obviously, hopefully there's docs on how to do this. Correct. But you can enhance your experience in such a way that now all the effort that you put and the curation and the love and the care that you put in the experience of the website, you can enhance then to have it as a desktop sort of feel as well. Absolutely. And then, you know, if you go back and I pop you back, like if I'm in my browser and I go to like look at all the apps, so look, look here, like I have all of these, these are all progressive web apps. They're all in my browser. I can discover them. They're all in one place, and I can go use them. That's amazing. All right, so I got to go to some questions because I'm speechless. This is really cool. How do I download it? Should I uninstall Edge? I'm like, basically, people are like, hey, I want to get in this. How do I do that? So should I uninstall the old Edge and then put this on? Yeah, I'll be honest. I literally downloaded this the very second I could, and it's my primary browser now. Right. Yeah, so, so you can go to MicrosoftEdgeInsiders.com to download the new preview of Edge today. Or last month we released the Edge Canary and Dev Channel build. So this is still really a preview. So we don't recommend uh, not using the current version of Edge as your daily driver. But if you want to use a daily driver, the Dev Channel is very good. The Canary 
You may discover bugs before we've had a chance to fix them because it's truly the build the edge engineering team uses every day to validate and fix bugs. So I'm basically going against your suggestion, but I don't care. Yeah. It's my computer. Well, they let me use it. It's yeah. not mine. The, the, the only other thing I would add is like, you know, if you go to the Microsoft Edge Insider, we also have some awesome community forums there because, you know, as we are building this product, we're really excited, of, uh, excited about building it with the community, getting their feedback. So please go try it out and, uh, you know, share your feedback. And what's cool is like, I've heard PWAs and I'm like, yeah, I should think about that. But this actually makes it real for me in a place where I know people will be. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so here's another question. Can users use non-Chromium Edge side by side with Edge Chromium in the future? Yep, and so uh, something else we heard from developers is they want uh, updates shipped at the speed of the web. So what we're doing is the next version of Edge will ship at a faster cadence, and you can install up to four different versions of Edge previews side by side with Stable Edge. So you'll have the dev, you'll have the canary, Eventually, we'll also release a beta channel. So this is a great way to like crystal ball what's coming ahead. You know, six months before stable, I can, or six weeks before stable, okay. which is a much faster right. cadence than what we've traditionally shipped. So yes, you can absolutely do that. That's really cool. So let's talk about the developer because you you flashed them in front of us, but, but can you show us a little bit more? Is are we adding more to what's there before, or is it just everything I'm, I've been used to? Say yeah. if I've been using Chrome. We we can talk about yeah. our contribution. So we we not only want to like adopt Chrome, and we want to, want to help make it better. And so we're hoping to bring our Windows platform expertise in this project and not only help Edge get better, but help all Chromium-based browsers get better all right. on, on Windows. Because we see that's good for our business, cool. that the web's better. So I am out of time. They told me to stop. Thank you so <laughs> much for, for being with us. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to take a break, but we'll be right back with a special breakout session and a new way to try .NET. Stay with us. <laughs>